These young women here in Madrid have decided to leave their native Spain. Marta Perez Rey is a nurse. Now that she's moving away, she'll have to start over, completely from scratch. Language classes are the first step. Today, she and her fellow students are out on the streets of Madrid with a teacher to get some hands-on practice in German. Hello. Wie geht's? Gut. Wie heißt du? Ich heiße Marta. Was kann man hier machen? Hier kann man äh, Opa sehen, äh, Musik hören und spazieren gehen. Dann bis Donnerstag. Tschüss. The country most of them want to move to is Germany, even though not a single one of them has ever been there. I think things are different there. Here there's always a lot happening on the streets, because it's warm, and the sun shines a lot. In Germany everyone stays home more because it's so cold. I think there are many differences between the two countries. The young women are going to spend the next few months finding out more about the differences and the similarities between Spain and Germany. For now, they don't really know what to expect. Their teacher is helping them make the transition. None of them has ever lived in a foreign country before, and moving away is a brave step. But it's also an adventure. I'm leaving behind my family and friends and the life I've lived for the last 23 years. It's not easy. But it's best not to concentrate on the hard bits, but to hope for the best and see what happens. Like Marta, hundreds of thousands of qualified young people have left their homes in southern and southeastern Europe in recent years. Unable to find work back home, many have headed for Germany. There, the unemployment rate is at a record low. Many companies are desperately looking for skilled workers, and the standard of living is known to be excellent. In Spain, Marta couldn't find a job, even though she's a qualified nurse. I would like to return to Spain at one point, start a family here and be with my friends again. That's my dream. But for the time being, I hope things will turn out well in Germany, that I'll learn a lot and do a good job and then come back. And I hope that the situation here improves. While surfing the internet looking for jobs, Marta stumbled across a scheme organized by the German Chamber of Commerce in Madrid. It sounded promising. She could take a six-month language course and then would get a job placement in a clinic in Germany. <laughs> Alexander Bell runs the International Formation Center, where Marta is now learning German. He's all too familiar with the problems facing the younger generation in Spain. One is that they tend to be very attached to their home. Going abroad is rarely a first choice. They usually still live at home with their parents and are well looked after. We try to show them that Europe is getting smaller all the time and even if they go abroad to work, it doesn't have to feel too far away. Even if they're somewhere else, distances aren't what they used to be. Marta is lucky. Her language course is financed entirely by subsidies from Germany. The German government scheme, Mobi Pro EU, is designed to attract out of work young people from countries hit hard by the financial crisis. The subsidies for skilled workers have already been exhausted. The response, especially from Spain, completely exceeded the government's expectations. For young people in particular, the situation in Eastern Europe is even worse than it is in Spain. Going abroad is often the only option. Hello, my name is Dimo Urumov. I'm 31 years old and I come from the town of Plovdiv in Bulgaria. I graduated from the Technical University in Sofia with a degree in design engineering and I'm about to move to Germany. Dimo spent more than two years looking in vain for work in Bulgaria. 
Now he's following in the footsteps of many of his friends and colleagues and leaving the country. Dimo wants to get on the career ladder and secure a better future for himself and his girlfriend. Downtown Plovdiv might look pretty chic and modern, but Bulgaria is still the poorest country in the European Union. Its economy is stagnant, and progress is hampered by weak leadership, corruption, and nepotism. The younger generation is deeply frustrated, but too jaded to try to make a difference. Dimo at least tried. I did what I could to get a better job here in Bulgaria. But right now I'm doing a job I'm overqualified for. It's not very demanding. I'm working in production. There is no call for university graduates, for specialists in this country. There is no work for engineers like me. There is no interest here in expertise. Dimo's girlfriend, Adriana, is supportive. It wasn't an easy decision to make, but it will be good for him and for me too. We're planning on trying our luck in Germany and hope things will work out for us there. Dimo learned German on his own. His effort and determination have paid off. He responded to a job advertisement he saw on the website of the German employment office and was hired. In Germany, his skills are highly sought after. The company I'm joining is called Retech Werzeugbau. It's north of Frankfurt, in Bad Endbach. Bad Endbach. Uh, I went there for an interview, and I was quite surprised by how lovely the area is. The countryside's beautiful. In both professional and personal terms, I can imagine a future there. It's a great place to start a career. The evening before he sets off, Dimo has dinner with his family. They won't see him again for another six months. It's hard to say goodbye, but everyone puts on a brave face. Until things improve in Bulgaria, qualified young people like Dimo will feel they have no choice but to leave the country and head west. Germany is just a two-hour flight away, but for Dimo, the plane is taking him into a whole new world. His parents and many of his friends have come to the airport to see him off, except for Adriana, who thought it would make it harder for him to go. Dimo is only planning on returning to Bulgaria for good if the situation there improves. Of course I'm sad. I'm his mother. But I know this is what's best for Dimo. And I'm very glad that things have turned out so well for him. What can I say? It's not about me. I'm just happy for my son. It's Sunday in Berlin. 35-year-old Mara Vrahaki moved here from Greece about a year ago. Before that, she lived in Athens for about 10 years, working as a singer and actress. But when jobs began to dry up as the financial crisis unfolded, Mara decided to learn German and eventually made the move to the German capital. Berlin is a creative capital. I always found the city interesting when I came here as a tourist. Even before the crisis, I'd been thinking about trying something new. That's why I chose Berlin. Berlin has long been home to a thriving Greek community. 
Like Mara, many new arrivals meet up with other expats when they're first finding their feet in their adopted home. This Greek cultural center has a help desk that's always busy. Staff advise the new arrivals and help them negotiate their way through Germany's endless bureaucracy. It was also here that Mara found her first acting job. It didn't pay very well, says Mara, but it was a start. I think I'll be able to work here as a dancer or a singer. And after a year or so, I might land a small part. And then slowly start to get more work. Today, the Cultural Center is hosting an event organized by the Federal Employment Agency to introduce new arrivals to the job market in Berlin and Germany. It's also relevant for people working in the arts. Competition here is very tough, they're told. Lots of artists come to the German capital looking to work in the theater, in film, the entertainment industry, and then find themselves going from one temporary job to another. It's not easy to land a contract even for Germans, not to mention people from abroad. Mara is on her way to a sound check in a small bar in the district of Friedrichshain. Making music is what she does best. I was very lucky to meet these guys. And I'm so thrilled to get to play with them. We're just one big happy family. Tonight, she and her band Anonymi are performing Lembetico, Greek folk music. The rest of the band have immigrant backgrounds, so they understand her roots. The original generation of first wave immigrants has been here for decades and is now starting to retire, so it's up to the younger generation to bring a breath of fresh air. The concert starts off with a song Mata wrote herself. For now, her career is only just getting started here in Germany. But hopefully, she'll soon be making a name for herself. Compared to Berlin, Mannheim is pretty quiet. But the popular university town has a population of 300,000 and draws students from across Germany and abroad. Language student Paulo Rodriguez moved here from Lisbon six months ago. He enjoys walking on the banks of the River Rhine. The river runs through the middle of town, and somehow it reminds me of home. That's why I like coming here. It makes me feel closer to home. Paulo lives in student housing. Mannheim is a very pleasant town. I'm here mainly to learn German, and this is the best place to do it. It's very easy to settle in and get used to life here. An engineer, Paulo lost a high-paying job at VW in Lisbon in late 2012. Even though he already spoke four languages, he decided to learn German. He left home, trading in his comfortable apartment for student digs. In the 50-odd years of its existence, the Goethe Institute in Mannheim has never seen such a boom in language courses. 
Paolo has come to sign up for an intensive course, which will begin soon. He's paying for the course himself, but he sees it as a good investment. I always felt drawn to Germany. I like how well organized it is, and I like the honest way Germans have of conducting business. It's quite a contrast to Portugal. Germany really appeals to me. Most of the other students in Paolo's class are also highly qualified professionals looking to get a start in Germany. They've cleared the first hurdle. They all now have a language proficiency certificate. Today is the last day of the course. At 44, Paolo was one of the oldest in the class. Like most of the course participants, his student days are long behind him. Learning a new language from scratch is enormously challenging. The Goethe Institute doesn't just offer language courses. Paolo also gets job application training. His caseworker goes through every detail of the application process with him, from how to write a resume to what documents are required. Paolo first started learning German back in Lisbon, but he soon realized that he would learn much faster if he were actually in Germany. Nonetheless, it wasn't easy for him to leave his wife and five-year-old daughter for six months. But in the long run, he knows he's doing the right thing. It's about my daughter's future. I believe that in decades to come, there will be far more opportunities outside Portugal. That's certainly the direction things seem to be heading. After six months in Mannheim, Paulo will be heading home again for the first time. He can't wait to see his family. Hello, zusammen, guten Morgen. Hello. What does Deutsch learn? Back in Madrid, Marta and the other nurses in her language class are set to leave for Germany in just a few weeks' time. A lot is still up in the air. We'd like to know where we're going to be working. A personnel manager from the company MediClean tells Marta Perez Rey that she'll be working in a clinic in Baden Württemberg. I think the region is quite similar to where I come from. But I'm slightly nervous about the fact that I might be going alone. I'd prefer to go with a colleague, so I'm not sure. I'm happy on the one hand, but I'm also a little sad. It's the weekend and Marta isn't planning on spending it in her student apartment in Madrid. She's going home to Galicia in northwestern Spain. She visits her family and friends there as often as she can. It's a seven-hour train trip, so she has plenty of time to think things over. I'm sad to be leaving my country, where I was born and where I studied, even if it's only for a while. And I know that it makes sense both personally and professionally. But I know that everyone will be waiting for me to come back. I know they'll all still be there for me. Marta's parents and her brother pick her up at the station. Family is an important part of life in Spain, and since the financial crisis, many young people are more dependent than ever on their parents' support. Marta grew up in the small town of Redondela. 
Here there are a few job opportunities for young people. The Spanish labor market is reportedly picking up, but in reality the improved figures are simply down to a rise in unskilled labor, seasonal and part-time work. Manta's brother Ignacio is 26 and still lives at home. He's studying mining technology and is about to start his masters. But he has no idea what awaits him once he's finished. Like Marta, he doesn't rule out moving abroad. <laughs> Times have changed. I think moving abroad isn't what it used to be. In the past, people would move to Germany or Argentina or wherever and only return 40 years later. We're not going to lose him like that. And if she finds a German husband, that wouldn't be bad either. If she's happy and can get ahead in her career, then it's wonderful. It's the best thing she could do. The day she leaves Spain is looming. Marta is having mixed feelings about her imminent departure. Marta is among the expats from all over Berlin who've come together on Greek National Day to celebrate. The community holds readings, concerts, and discussion evenings throughout the year. Greeks have always been willing to emigrate. They know how to create a home away from home. In his welcome address, the community's president recalls the 1960s and the first generation of Greek immigrants in Germany. Today, Berlin is home to a third generation of Greek immigrants. I like spending time with other Greeks. We have similar personalities, we have a lot to talk about, including the challenges we face here. But I didn't come here to live in a mini Greece. Mara loves meeting new people. She spends what little free time she has with her many international friends, preferably in the Mauer Park which is located on the former border between East and West Berlin. It's the sort of place where Berlin lives up to its reputation as one of the world's coolest capitals. You were uninjured, hiding your battle scars from the light. Your scars from the light, your scars from the light, yes, your scars. Berlin has become one of the most popular destinations for many young Greeks moving overseas, and especially for creative types like Mara. It doesn't matter that they often find it hard to make ends meet. Here in the German capital, anything goes. Graffiti artists were even allowed to decorate the remains of the Berlin Wall. To Mara, there's nowhere quite like it. It's a very lively city and it's also affordable. You can get by here with very little money. I think it's a place where you can enjoy a lot of freedom. But for me personally, it's probably a bit too alternative. Today, she has a rehearsal at an intercultural center called Tospiti. The group has been working on this play for six months. This is my directorial debut and I've really enjoyed it. I've drawn on all my experience and skills in dance, singing and acting. And it's been a valuable experience. So far, Mara hasn't had much luck getting a foot in the door of Berlin's main theatres. 
She chalks it up to the fact that her German isn't quite fluent, but she remains optimistic. Before the play begins, Mara welcomes the audience with a few words in German. Tonight's play, written by a Greek playwright, is about a tempestuous relationship between two young women who have known each other since childhood. The performance is hardly sold out, but as far as Mara is concerned, the evening is a complete success. Bad Endbach is a little spa town in Hessen. Dimo from Bulgaria has started a new chapter in his life here. He's been living in the German countryside for a few weeks now. Life here is very different. In Bulgaria, especially in Plovdiv and Sofia, there is always a lot going on. Buses and cars everywhere. But here it's so quiet. It takes Dimo just 10 minutes to walk to work. Back in Plovdiv, it took him at least an hour on public transportation. He's settled into his new job very well. I enjoy the work a lot. I have years of experience in this field. The biggest challenge is the language, but my new colleagues are all very nice and really helpful. The company is delighted with Dimo. He has exactly the sort of expertise they desperately needed. It's highly likely that we'll keep him. Assuming, of course, he wants to stay, that's up to him. But he's on the right track. He has the qualifications we need. Obviously, he still has a lot to learn, but that's to be expected at this point. The company already employs a number of Eastern Europeans. It didn't take long before they'd made themselves indispensable. And it hasn't taken Dimo long to get used to working in a foreign language. Dimo and his colleagues set off for company headquarters in Bad Zoden, about a hundred kilometers away. One of the reasons so many businesses are hiring foreign workers is because there's a dearth of qualified workers within Germany. Ritex manufacturing plant is also in Bad Zoden. This is where the tools Dimo designed on a computer are put to use. Today he's getting to see them in action. The mid-sized company manufactures products made from plastic and rubber. The workers aren't as highly skilled as Dimo. Most of them were trained in-house. It's the end of the working day in Bad Entbach. For the time being, Dimo is still living in a hotel. It doesn't exactly feel like home, but he's prepared to forfeit a few creature comforts for the sake of his future. Although he can see that living in a city would have many advantages. In Bulgaria, all the big companies are located in the cities. In Deutschland, es gibt überall, uh, wo man, um, but in Germany, you can find work anywhere. Uh, in, Bulgaria, in Bulgaria, you'd never be able to get a job in a small village. Dimo has already established that there is not an awful lot to do on his days off. When I'm not working, I like to go for walks. The countryside is really lovely. It makes a welcome change from work. I can definitely see myself living here. And Dimo hopes his girlfriend Adriana will soon join him.
Portugal is still reeling from the effects of the financial crisis. Paulo Rodriguez is an engineer. He used to have a well-paid job in the car industry. He's on a flying visit to his family in Lisbon. These days, the family has to rely on Paulo's wife's salary. She's a consultant. She and Paulo know that going abroad is the only real option. The last six months haven't been easy. We Skyped every evening. The one hour time difference wasn't a big deal. Our daughter Gabriela couldn't wait for the call and her daily chat with her father. The immigration of tens of thousands from Portugal and the EU's other debt-stricken countries is having far-reaching repercussions. Just how severe is unclear. Paulo is trying to turn lemons into lemonade. Now that he's out of work, he uses his free time pursuing his hobby, photography. I've always loved taking photos. It's about capturing a moment. When you live somewhere and you're not a tourist, you tend not to notice much. Photography is a way of looking at things anew and exploring your environment. Historically, Portugal has always been a country of emigration, but the number of people leaving now is dramatic. Everyone in Portugal has a friend or a relative who's moved away, to France or somewhere. This is the fate of the Portuguese people, as my own example goes to show. I'm also looking for a new future. That search took Paulo to the Goethe Institute in Lisbon. Over a thousand students enroll for German language classes here every semester. Germany is at the top of the list of the most popular destination countries for Portuguese looking to move to distant shores. Paulo hopes to have found a job in the car industry in Germany within the next six months. Until then, he'll keep practicing his German so he doesn't forget what he learned in Mannheim. Hello. Hello, Morgen. guten Tag. Wir kennen yeah. uns. Ja, uh, ja, yeah, 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 yeah. richtig. Sie waren unser Schüler, ne? Ja, ja, in letzte uh, September. Yeah. Today he's at the Goethe Institute in the hopes of finding some tandem conversation partners. Ja, ich musste wissen, ob vielleicht sie haben eine tandem partner Programm oder ich. The trouble is, he's told, there are too many Portuguese keen to learn German, but not enough Germans who want to learn Portuguese. Paulo is undeterred. Now that I can speak German, I'm getting a lot more response from German companies. I've had a few interviews, but no concrete offers yet. Mana Vlahaki never tires of the view of the Acropolis. She goes home a few times a year to visit her family and friends. There seems to be little evidence of the country's economic woes in the heart of Athens. In fact, the economy looks as though it's picking up. But the unemployment rate in Greece is still at 30%, the highest in Europe. Obviously, the situation is difficult. There is little funding available for the arts. There is little funding, period. But I think people who really want to work will always find something. It's important to keep yourself busy. It's important for your personal development. 
Outside the National Theater of Greece Drama School, she has an emotional reunion with her friend Joanna. They spent three years studying here together. The Greek theater industry was hard hit by the financial crisis, but Mara has nothing but happy memories of her years here. Once I worked with the German director Peter Stein, and I also worked with a famous Greek director. I've done cabaret, kids theater, musicals. I'm very pleased with what I've achieved professionally here in Greece. But you never know what's going to happen. Mara spends the next day with her parents. They live about 30 kilometers outside Athens in a small town on the coast. Mara's father used to work for Olympic Airways, so the family used to travel a lot. It broadened their horizons, so they never felt trapped living in such a small village. Now Mara's parents are retired and enjoying a quiet life although a visit from their daughter is always an excuse for a family celebration. She enjoys their unconditional support. She hasn't changed. She's still Greek. She's always looking to gain experience. But her attitude has changed, and that tells me that she knew what she was doing by moving away. And she's already reaping the benefits. She's had some good parts, some leading parts, but in order to get ahead she needed to move to a more central part of Europe, and these days that's Berlin. In terms of creativity, it's the capital of Europe. We're happy she's there, we're okay with it. Mara still can't really tell if leaving Greece has been worth it. What do you think? Will you stay in Germany or will you come back to beautiful Greece? I'll definitely stay in Germany for a few more months. My work with the theater could lead to something. Once my German has improved, I'll be able to work with German directors. I'll have to see what happens. But if I thought there were opportunities for me back in Greece or somewhere else, then I'd take advantage of them. Reichshof in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Mata Perez Rey has finally arrived in Germany. The small town hasn't had many Spanish residents before. Now it has two. Living in the German countryside takes a bit of getting used to. But the two nurses have been taken on as members of the staff at the local hospital. And for Marta, that's the main thing. Being a nurse was always my dream, and now it's come true. Marta spent three years training as a nurse. Unlike in Germany, in Spain, nursing requires a college degree. But while there are few nursing jobs to be had in Spain, Germany is happy to snap up its highly qualified nurses. Of course, adapting to their new environment brings its own challenges. Good. It was hard communicating at first. Some of the patients speak so fast, but others speak slower, and then I understand more. But I'm very happy here, and I love working, and I'm learning all the time. For now, Marta and her friend are still in temporary accommodation, but they're looking for an apartment. The hospital has a dedicated help desk for employees from abroad. 
They receive a lot of support while they try to settle in. The hospital authorities are aware that apartment hunting and filling out forms can be a struggle. Because they're so keen to hold on to the Spanish nurses, they help as much as they can. When the clinic expanded, it had trouble finding additional staff within Germany. A combination of factors from bad pay to a rise in the number of people requiring care has resulted in a shortage of skilled workers in the healthcare sector. The clinic even factored in Marta's reservations about going alone to Germany and hired one of her friends too. Now I'm living together with my friend, Noelia. It's great. We cook together. We take trips together. We talk about what happened at work. I'm glad she's here. Today, the two young Spanish women are visiting Cologne. They're enjoying getting to know their adopted home. Like many young people in Europe today, they took a courageous step and moved abroad in order to earn a living. It's paid off. So what will Marta's next move be? I'm very happy in Germany. At the moment, things are going really well. I can imagine spending two years here or perhaps even longer.